This video will cover quasi-experiments focusing on the regression discontinuity method. At the end of this video, you should be able to identify a quasi-experimental technique appropriate for estimating a treatment effect in a given situation, and apply the regression discontinuity method to estimate a treatment effect and evaluate its validity. Uh, so this and previous videos have been discussing methods of using natural experiments to measure causal effects, and this is going to cover one final method. And we'll start with another example. i uh, pose the question, uh, what is the effect of being on academic probation on a GPA, grade point average? Uh, so academic probation is uh, generally intended to uh, help struggling students improve uh, their grades. And so one might hope that uh, placement on academic probation would uh, help those students to increase their GPA. Uh, you could imagine that if we were to collect data on students, denoted by I, uh, including their GPA and a dummy variable equal to 1, uh, if that student was on uh, academic probation, uh, 0 otherwise, uh, we could estimate this model, and the estimated beta 1 would represent the difference in average GPAs between students on probation versus students not on probation. So on one hand, that difference may reflect in part uh, the impact of academic probation on GPA. Uh, however, I hope you'll see there is an obvious problem here. Uh, you could think of it of, as omitted variable bias. Um, variables such as study habits, uh, preparation, and so on and so forth uh, may be important omitted variables here. Um, but perhaps just even more obviously, those students who are on academic probation are on it uh, because they were struggling academically, uh, presumably in the previous semester. And so uh, one would not be surprised to find that those on probation are still uh, getting lower GPAs than those not on uh, probation overall, even if academic probation has a positive uh, impact. So our, for our third quasi-experimental te technique, uh, let's consider uh, a fact that many academic probation programs are uh, based on students being below some threshold GPA in the previous semester. Uh, so for example, suppose that students who were just below a 2.0 GPA last semester are now on probation, and those just above are not. Um, Intuitively, you may think of uh, that very sharp cutoff as giving us something like uh, a randomized experiment where we could potentially compare uh, those students who were just barely on probation versus those who were just barely not on probation. Uh, so this is the idea behind what's known as the regression discontinuity uh, technique, and uh, this can help us to estimate the causal impact of probation. So when we use uh, regression discontinuity, uh, as the name implies, we need to be evaluating a treatment which is determined by some discontinuity. Uh, so to introduce some terminology, uh, we will need uh, obviously some outcome variable, but we'll also need what's uh, known as a forcing variable or a running variable, which we'll denote as a W. Uh, so in our case, uh, that W is the previous semester's GPA. So last semester's GPA. And the key thing about last semester's GPA in our case is that it determines the treatment. So x is a treatment dummy variable, so it's equal to 1 or 0. Uh, 1 uh, if on act pro, which is the treatment, 0 otherwise. Uh, but also notice that uh, we can uh, determine the value of x based on last semester's GPA, based on the forcing variable. So it is equal to 1 if w is less than that 2.0 threshold, uh, or 0 if w is greater than or equal to that 2.0 threshold. Um, so uh, we are going to estimate uh, this model. We're going to regress a relevant outcome, uh, such as the current semester's uh, GPA. And I want to think a little bit about uh, why this regression might help to uh, tell us the impact of academic probation. So let's draw a graph of this semester's GPA. I'll call it GPA 2, uh, just to mean that it's uh, uh, maybe the second semester um, of college versus GPA 1. 
right? So it's possible that based on your GPA first semester, you're placed on academic probation in the second semester. And more specifically, if you're below this 2.0 cutoff in the first semester, then you are going to be on probation on this left side of the, the graph, but you would not be on probation if you fall on the right side of this graph. Um, so what do we think the relationship between GPA in the second semester versus GPA in the first semester might look like? Uh, certainly we would expect those two uh, quantities to be positively related. Most likely if you did better in your first semester, you're also going to do better in your second semester. So there is probably some sort of positive relationship here. Uh, but think carefully about what happens right at this cutoff. So a student who is just below this uh, 2.0 uh, GPA is going to be placed on academic probation. Perhaps that probation uh, gives them additional study time. It gives them additional motivation to improve their grades. Whereas a student just to the right of that 2.0 cutoff um, did um, similarly their first semester. They probably still struggled their first semester if they had a 2.1 GPA. Uh, and yet they were not placed on academic probation. They didn't have these potential benefits. And so you might expect that those students are actually going to do a little bit worse. Okay. And then we would expect that this uh, line is going to continue up. Right. And so uh, what you'll notice here is that um, there is potentially a, a discontinuity um, in the outcome GPA of the second semester uh, right at this threshold. And if you take a careful look at our, uh, our regression equation, um, we are allowing there to be a relationship between uh, the outcome y, which is GPA in the second semester, and the running variable w, which is GPA in the first semester. But we're also allowing there to be this impact of academic probation beta 1. And sure enough, this discontinuity uh, is going to be that estimated uh, beta 1 hat. Okay, so that uh, we're going to uh, uh, attribute the vertical jump on that graph to the causal effect of uh, the treatment. In other words, we are comparing those just above versus just below uh, the, the treatment and um, associating just that specific difference with the effect of the treatment, in this case, ACPRO. Uh, so there are a few technical notes on regression discontinuity. Uh, we won't go over all these in detail, but uh, they are uh, worth being familiar with uh, if you do apply regression discontinuity in some real-world setting. Uh, first, results are considered to be more accurate if the sample is limited to observations uh, with values of the forcing variable near the cutoff. So in our case, that means that we should focus on previous semester GPAs close to 2.0. Uh, so rather than comparing students with GPAs of 0 0.5 versus 3.5 last semester, we should probably be comparing students who had a 1.9 versus a 2.1 last semester. There's also an extensive literature on selecting what's known as the bandwidth, uh, which tells us how far away from that threshold, threshold we should look. Um, a second point is that uh, regression discontinuity results are more trusted if the data pass what's known as a falsification test. Uh, the idea behind a falsification test is that we're going to estimate the same type of model that we did uh, before, but we are going to replace the outcome y with a pre-treatment characteristic. Uh, so something that is determined before the treatment could have occurred. So in the case of academic probation, uh, perhaps there is, uh, we could include something like uh, performance in high school. Um, and what we should find, uh, since it's impossible for a treatment to, a, to have a causal effect on a pre-treatment characteristic, uh, is that uh, we should find that uh, the estimated uh, beta 1 coefficient is uh, very close to zero. In fact, we could perform a, uh, a formal statistical test that beta 1 is equal to zero versus not equal to zero. Uh, if um, we turn out to reject that null hypothesis, this indicates a likely problem with the regression discontinuity method, and um, it's a similar problem to a failure to randomize an experiment. And so if we reject that null hypothesis, we probably should not trust the subsequent regression discontinuity estimates.
Right. Uh, one limitation of uh, this model that we've been focusing on is that the slope of the relationship for the outcome versus the forcing variable, so in our case, last semester's GPA versus this semester's GPA, has to be the same on both sides of the cutoff. Uh, we could fix this with two steps. Uh, the first step is to define the forcing variable so that it is uh, centered uh, around zero. Uh, and so to, to do that, um, we could, for example, say that the forcing variable w is not just the GPA, but it's the GPA minus two. In other words, any positive values of w would indicate that the GPA is above two, meaning uh, the student is not on probation. If, um, if w is less than zero, then that means that the previous semester's GPA is less than two, and so the student is on probation. Uh, the second step is that we are going to include this interaction term of x times w in our model. And you might recall from a uh, discussion of the interaction terms uh, is that that, uh, that term in the, the associated coefficient beta 3 will allow there to be different slopes uh, on the right side versus the left side of the graph. All right, and one final point is that uh, instead of this linear model where we draw a straight line uh, to represent the relationship between the outcome and the forcing variable, we could instead estimate nonlinear relationships uh, such as uh, polynomial functions on each side of the cutoff. Uh, so again, we won't focus on uh, these in more detail, but do be aware if you uh, use or uh, read about regression discontinuity that you may want to consider these additional uh, ideas.